Hello, hello, hello guys and welcome back to Joe's Ventures and today we've got a cool little special episode of Jurassic World Evolution news update. So with Gamescom, everyone knows like the biggest gaming event of the year, um, Jurassic World Evolution 2 has kind of stormed on the scene with Frontier and they've kind of given us like a pre-order trailer and all sorts of new things to look at and I'm really excited to go through some of that with you guys and we'll be starting with the trailer then go off the pre uh the orders the pre-order deluxe like pack with some new animals and such so that'd be really really cool and we'll go through the trailer and we'll just have a little talk and discussion and what i think this about this and i think of how cool it is so yeah we're going to be starting with the pre-order trailer so i'm gonna just go as i react if you want to watch it i'll put the link in the description of course so we will just go forward with it so yeah One thing I noticed there, that looks very much like the Jurassic World Evolution, uh, not uh, Pteranodon. Looks very much like the, which is based on the Jurassic Park 3 one, so looks like we might be getting that back, so that'd be awesome. So we can see this wonderful herd of Stegosaurus, we can see the changes in colours and patterns, you can see this one's got like... Uh, brownish like a yellowish with uh, red this one's much more gray this one's much more brown you can see the variation within the individuals there that's part of the patterns and you can see this one for the uh, Paris Royal Office. you can see this one's got like a pink stripe this one's got like a brown one even then let's go back a little bit then you can see that this one's grayish this one's definitely more brownish. You can see the variation within the individuals. This one's got like a white one. I think that's really cool to help identify individuals and that's part of the uh, patterns and stuff that we've talked about before. And then there we have Carnotaurus. Look at him go. Carnotaurus seems like he's got a bit of an update. Looks a little nicer. If you guys don't know recently, there was actually a paper about um, showing how the skin of uh, Carnotaurus looked like. And it was actually in a lot of regards pretty elephant like because elephants have special skin for thermoregulation so they kind of incorporate that since they're both large animals that's an apt comparison but it didn't really have this kind of osteoderm kind of look but i still think it's cool it's a nice design so we're gonna watch it look at him running you can see him clipping there well that's a pretty bad tumble <laughs> So an authentic Jurassic World experience. You can see we shot him down. The new helicopter. Let's see US uh, Fish and Wildlife. So it looks like we might be doing some missions and stuff for them. That's cool. And you can see some different animals there. We can see a Margosaurus there. You can see the different colors. That one's like a reddish brown. That one's just more like brown brown. Interacting here. It's quite a cute interaction. I'd like to see more of those. See, so we've got when you, you are in control. And that's a good look at the new buildings. And we can also see this uh, more of a Jurassic Park, quote unquote, style. So without the glass, you have much more of the style of the like chain uh, link and uh, steel Avery. And you can see this little base. It looks like there's be some sort of mission. You can see you've got Stegosaurus here, Parasaurolophus and Amagosaurus here. So I assume we'll be working a lot within that. And then we move up to a more Tega biome. You can see the uh, Triceratops uh, pushing around in there. Some Gallimimus, of course Brachiosaurus. You can see the variations again within them. The Pseudoceratops. And then you can see the Avery here. So we can see that definitely we can probably switch between them along with a lot of these new buildings and a visitor's area. So you can see that that's just a lot of what we've seen before, like uh, terrain painting, and then we can see, uh, what was it, the terrain painting? And then you can see the movable uh, rocks and stuff. 
and then also the painting and also some cute interactions with the Brachiosaurus. So it seems like they'd be taking a cue from Planet Zoo and having a lot of social interactions within the dinosaurs. And yet we can see that the uh, system for the Avery seems to be very much a drag and drop system. So you can kind of place one node and the nodes will connect as you place them next to each other, which is a pretty cool system. And then we can also see here, Jungosaurus in the back, some more Gallimimus. And a cute little interaction there with the Nasutoceratops biting the uh, horn. That's really cool. That's Jungosaurus again. Here we have a Dimorphodon who's clearly escaped. If you guys uh, read the spotlights for these guys, they can get out and hang out on your buildings and attack your dinosaurs. So you got to be careful of that. Very much the Jurassic World uh, Dimorphodon, uh, which is kind of ugly, <laughs> but it's Dimorphodon nonetheless and an interesting animal. A really early pterosaur, which I like. And then you can see here, this is the return of the uh, glass domes. And we can see this is much more of like a temperate biome, which I like the green grass. I always love green grass and you can see the trees and stuff. You can also see here, looks like a little bit of viewing uh, for something cool. And we can see much more green grass and Brachiosaurus here. Different biome. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Jurassic. That just shows up some of the editing that we can do with the building. As we mentioned before, you can change and edit. There's like different presets and you can mix and match. So that's pretty cool. World. And that's Topin, uh, I forgot his name. Topin Jactus, or it's kind of like the, it's Ornithochirus that you remember from like Walking with Dinosaurs, but it's lumped into another genus. Topin Jaculus or something, or Topin Jactus. I'll have to read it to pronounce it. <laughs> but yeah, we're getting another cool pterosaur. So we've got Dimorphodon, Topinjactylus, or how do you pronounce it? Uh, Topinjaris, I think it is, actually. And Tranodon. And we'll get into more as we look at the update, so that's cool. And we've got some more dinosaurs here. So if we look here... This is um, Qjongosaurus, which is a really interesting addition that's got its own uh, species field guide kind of video. It's really cool because this was actually des described by the advisor for Jurassic World Dominion, which was, of course, uh, Stephen L. Brousset, who wrote a couple books. And he's actually a pretty good science educator, and he works a lot on theropod dinosaurs. And this one was described from China. Really interesting animal. It's also nicknamed Pinocchio Rex because it's got a really long snout. Quite an Allosaurus, that looks really nice. And look at that, look we got these viewing vents here and we can see some water here, we know what's coming. But I love the shark model, the shark model looks so nice, it's like a, looks just like a normal great white shark, I love it. So look at that, doesn't that look wonderful? I'm just gonna marvel over the shark. And then we see our Mosasaur friend, which we'll have a look soon, so yeah. Jurassic World Evolution 2, how awesome. Another good look at Rex, and then look what we can see here. Jurassic Park San Diego. That's something I mentioned in a video a while back about having like a, um, what was it, a pack? So like a Lost World pack. And yeah, we can finally see it here. That looks awesome, and it really fits with that. Looks like it is San Diego. We can see the cityscape back there. And then we can see when we're getting it. So it's coming the 9th of November. No one's surprised by the November date. But I didn't expect it that early in November. But still, we got two months leading up. Really excited to give it a play. And now you can go pre-order. So I'll put the link in the description, of course. So if you guys want to go have a look and uh, pre-order, you do that. So yeah, we're going to have a look at the pre-order list now. Let me just make that a little bigger so we can read better. So hello, park managers. We know you've been greatly, we know you're greatly anticipating the future release of Jurassic World Evolution 2, and it's been absolutely incredible to see everyone's excitement since the announcement in June. Today we're answering the question you've all been waiting for, it's time to talk about the game's release date. Check out the trailer below and read on for more information, so we just watched the trailer. We're incredibly happy to announce that Jurassic World Evolution 2 is coming to PC, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S. 
PlayStation 4 and Xbox One on the 9th of November 2021. We hope that you're ready to experience everything Jurassic World Evolution 2 has to offer, no matter which platform you choose. So this goes in, immerse yourself in a completely original Jurassic World narrative, kind of what you've already heard before. You'll be uh, working alongside Ian Malcolm, voiced by Jeff Goldblum, and Claire Deering, voiced by Bryce Dallas Howard, to lead the efforts of the DW, DFW, so Department of Fish and Wildlife, so that if you guys don't live in America, that's kind of the department where they manage natural resources like uh, endangered species and hunting management, things like that, where they regulate it and control it. To control, conserve, and contain wild dinosaurs that were let loose around the United States. Uh, Test your skills against never-before-seen never locations. And the, as the campaign leaves, uh, we test islands behind and be able to look at a bunch of new environments. So that's pretty cool. So revisit pivotal moments in the Jurassic World film franchise and make your mark in a range of what-if scenarios from realizing John Hammond's dream as an operational Jurassic Park to showcasing a T-Rex in the San Diego Amphitheater. So that's what we look in there. So I'm really excited to see that. And this mode will take your journey through the Jurassic World franchise. I don't know why they called it Jurassic Park franchise. I think they should have. But whatever. Let your creativity be unleashed in sandbox mode and create the ultimate Jurassic Park or Jurassic World Dinosaur Park used uh, using themes, built uh, buildings, and decorations. I think that means we get like a mixed eras because everyone was talking about mixing the Jurassic World area with the era with the Jurassic Park era and Jurassic World Evolution One. So I think that might actually be mixed here. So that's pretty cool. And you can put your management systems to the test in a range of different missions in challenge mode and work best to achieve the best park rating in the shortest amount of time. So not too different as before. So now you can pre-order it and Steam, Epic Game Store, PlayStation and Xbox. And we have some great pre-order bonuses for everyone who does. Pre-order now to get a unique set of amazing looking skins for your park uh, vehicles. These Vehicle skins can be used in sandbox and challenge mode and were inspired by the Lost World Jurassic Park. So I really like these. Look how look at these wonderful. You can see that. Looks straight out of Jurassic uh, Lost World. Can you not love them? Really nice. And here we've got some more stuff coming. So that's a pre-order. So that's if you order. So this is about Deluxe Edition. So if you pay extra, this is what you're going to get. The Jurassic World Evolution 2 Deluxe Edition is also available for pre-order. This pack will come with some beautiful extra content for vehicles, skins, and to dinosaurs and prehistoric reptiles. They will look absolutely stunning in your park. Here's what you're getting if you pick up the deluxe edition. So you get six amenity guest building signs to adorn and embellish your shop and restaurants. So three food signs, uh, sushi, calamari, uh, ca what was that, a calamari, cavalry, I don't even know what that word is, and waffles. Uh, can you make your sushi res restaurant for nature lovers? Lovers? That's weird. How about a waffle house for adventure seekers? You'd be good to go with these designs. A uh, carvery, I think that's what it actually is. So you're getting like a beer barbecue or something. So three dinosaur protection group of vehicle skins for sandbox and challenge mode. These vehicle skins were inspired by the organization from Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, established by Claire Deering. The DPG is a non-profit organization that focuses on the preservation of dinosaurs, advocating for their rights as a species. Adorn your capture team vehicles, range of vehicles, and MVUs with gorgeous with these gorgeous green and white skins to show up that you're fighting for the protection and preservation of dinosaurs. And I have to admit, they look pretty nice. I like the logo. It's actually a really nice logo. I never really liked Fallen Kingdom, but I think that was a cool logo. So yeah, let's have a look at the five dinosaurs and prehistoric reptiles. So if the 75 plus dinosaurs and prehistoric reptiles in the base game aren't enough, you can get five more by buying the Jurassic World Evolution 2 Deluxe Edition, which includes one new dinosaur. Uh, I think that's meant to be like three because it's five here. Three new dinosaurs, one new flying reptile and one new marine reptile. So we've got one who's returning. Kind of sad he didn't make the base roster, but I can see he was kind of like the most expendable one. But it seems like we're getting Huangosaurus back as a paid DLC or paid deluxe edition, which a lot of people are not happy with. But if you think about it, it's already been replaced in game with a new, probably a new dinosaur. So mm, 
I feel like it's kind of a iffy thing. They were gonna have they were gonna have to probably repeat themselves anyway. There's only so many dinosaurs and so many animals that you can put in the game, but it doesn't bother me too much. It's only one dinosaur in a set of five that are actually are pretty notable and interesting. So this is the oldest known member of the Stegosaur family. And it's considered one of the most important fossils discovered in China. So it, it represents a really early uh, stegosaur and tells us a lot about the revolution. That's why they're considered so cool. And doesn't look too much change from uh, the first game. I think maybe just some updates on the textures and we can see some color changes. We'll be able to mix up match and patterns, stuff like that. That'll be cool. So it will be kind of a new animal, even if it's just the same model. But we'll be kind of getting a lot more uh, decorations with it. So... Next one. This one's pretty interesting. This fits perfectly with the Boreal biome. We've got Pachyrhinosaurus. So this thick neck lizard is known from... Thick nose lizard, I mean. It's known from the bony mass on its face. A unique and interesting dinosaur. We hope your park uh, guests will enjoy seeing them along with their distant cousins, the Triceratops. So we can see that one looks really nice. I believe this This looks like species... Um. Landscape, because you can see that the defining feature or the diagnostic characteristic of that is kind of this uh, little horn sticking out there that might be right. Um, you can you can shout at me in the comments if I'm wrong, which I can be often. But I'm actually really a big fan of the color of this guy. I really like this like mo uh, pattern here. Reminds me of like a reticulated python. I don't know why, but I think it looks nice. So the eye spots look kind of cool. It's clearly JP uh, style. I think it looks nice. I I would probably want something a little bit more distinct, but I think it looks fine. Uh, yeah, I don't have anything strong to say about it. It's a nice dinosaur. There's nothing wrong with cool new dinosaurs. Pachy is a Pachy rhinosaurus is a cool dinosaur. So we also got Megalosaurus. So this one is a bit weird, but we'll go into it. So this is one of the first dinosaurs to be discovered. It name literally means a big lizard. It was supposedly first discovered in 1676. Now it's a part of Jurassic World 2 Deluxe Edition. So I get it. It's a generic theropod kind of, quote unquote, even though it's the first one to be discovered. It's kind of the trendsetter. It's a mid-sized generic theropod. But it looks like they went with the acro treatment kind of here. Because if you remember in the first game, they kind of just made it like a rex, but with a spine. It didn't look like Echocanthosaurus at all. And they've kind of done that with that Megalosaurus here. It just gives us this weird crest I'm personally not a fan of. But I do like the face that it's got. I like that they give it like a... Because Megalosaurids were the early ancestors of the Spinosaurids. So I think it's cool that they give us like the cool teeth here. Overall doesn't look too bad. It's not got pronated hands, so that's cool. And I like the pattern, but... It just seems a little over the top. They're just like trying to make it different and kind of... Mm, I'm meh on this one, but still not a bad dinosaur. So now we've got a pterosaur. So this one, everyone's like, clone, clone, and yes, it's a clone. And there's no way you can deny that it's not. So one of the largest pterosaurs, Giusten Bergia's wingspan grew over set to over 7 meters long. Its distinctive characteristic is the upright cranial crest, believed to be likely for purely display purposes. Okay, So this is a very close relative, even sometimes lumped within Pteranodon. And I believe that was the original concept for uh, Lost World. It was Geostenbergia, which is a really cool animal. Definitely a clone, kind of something you'd expect for a deluxe pack. Doesn't look too bad. It looks like a Geostenbergia. I like it. It's okay. It's cool. I just kind of wish they all had fuzz, but we're not going to get fuzz anytime soon, I don't think. And we've got a really cool reveal for uh, our marine animals. We've got a marine animal. This is Antibrosaurus. A really cool pick I didn't expect, but I love how it ties into the franchise. So this plesiosaur lived 190 million years ago and is named after the famed natural historian, Sir David Attenborough. And his brother is Richard Attenborough, who played John Hammond in Jurassic Park and The Lost World Jurassic Park. I love that because it's kind of like a, a nod to him. And also like to his brother as well, who's obviously a naturalist. And then to Richard Attenborough, who played John Hammond. So it's kind of a really cool pick. I, I think that's a cool pick, even if it's not like the most interesting visual animal. And plus, if you compare to Plesiosaurus, how it was already in game, which I'm going to go on soon. 
we are going to uh i think it looks like a really nice ter- uh plesiosaur it's going to say teaser pterosaur but we can see it's got the uh scales and stuff it looks nice it doesn't scream bad to me it's uh, i'll get into it when i talk about the plesiosaurus but this one just looks like your normal run of the mill plesiosaur it's just like a normal animal but once we get into the plesiosaur you kind of play but i'll explain a bit about that later but yeah really cool one so do you have your park management hats ready let us know in the comments who you're most excited for so yeah obviously talk about that i'm a really big fan of the atombrosaurus and I quite like the Pachyrhinosaurus, but we'll be getting into a couple uh, soon. So we'll have a look at this one. This is Kuzongosaurus. You can see here, this was I uh, mentioned uh, Pinocchio Rex. So you can call one Pinocchio if you like. Really nice animal. So this is a look at the Allosaurus. We already got a look in the trailer. This is from like a little extra little um, mission thing. You'll probably see videos coming about now with like Best and Slot. There's like a little mission that they did as part of like a promo, like a in in game thing. And we can see we can add see the Allosaurus changed. It's got like not pronated hands anymore, so that's awesome. What's well, got pronated hands on me? Since it's kind of no, that's not pronated. <laughs> Where am I at today? But it's not got its buddy hands, so that's good. And yeah, we can see we got Carnotaurus. We also saw in the trailer. Looks much nicer. Looks like you slimmed up a bit. Uh, textures updated as well. We got Majungasaurus as well. Saw that in the trailer. And this is the Plesiosaurus. So if you compare the Plesiosaurus to the Edinburghsaurus, um, you can see that it's got much more of a snake-like design, which is less accurate when we don't consider uh, real life. So you can see here, these got these big scales here. And we know that from skin impressions that most uh, plesiosaurs tended to have very, very small scales or even smooth skin, if that, mainly just smooth skin. So obviously, which helps reduce drag when swimming. So a lot of these big feature scales most likely weren't a thing. And you can also see it's very King Cobra. I honestly thought this plesiosaur looks like a King Cobra. And if you want to have a look at videos of like Gaming Beaver and uh, everyday riot i think he had good videos and looks at them obviously i don't have access to those kind of uh, uh videos and uh, demos yet but you can see it very much looks like a king cobra and are given it lips and normally i'd say good on you for giving it lips but it seems like uh most plesiosaurs did not have lips they kind of had if you look at the atonbrosaurus that you can see here they kind of had this look this is basically what plesiosaurus should look like but that being said, oh, I just gave you a teaser. That being said, it is a fine design. I think it's a really cool design in terms of being just a design. If you go for accuracy, who cares? Uh, kind of like asking accuracy from the Jurassic Park franchise is asking it first to climb a tree these days. So I'm not worried. But to distinguish it from Atombrosaurus, this is a cool design and I think it looks nice. But we're also going to have a look at the one animal that everyone's been waiting for. We've got the Mosasaurus. So here's a really cool look. I think I'll get a little bit bigger on this guy. So there's already been some videos. Basis Lot put one out and I had a look. The uh, Lagoon system works very similar to the Averys. It's kind of like a round circle that you can place and then you can place them next to each other and connect it. Mosasaurus seem to be very much like space. So they're like having five rings and that will all connect into one big lagoon. And I think it looks really nice. Uh, it looks very much like the Jurassic World Mosasaur, even though obviously it doesn't look anything like a real-life Mosasaur, consistent with the franchise. Though I hope we get something like Tylosaurus, and that can be kind of the Entbrosaurus to the Moses, uh, to the Plesiosaurus, and that Tylosaurus or another Mosasaur for it to be like very accurate so you can have like the tail fin and the smooth skin, and I think that would be pretty cool. But... I think they're just showing off the Mosasaur for the moment, and we'll probably get uh, more looks as the release date comes further. So yeah, a really cool little update. I thought that was really cool to see all these cool animals. I'm pretty excited for Jurassic World Evolution. I'll probably pre-order it soon, maybe. I'll think about it, but I'm definitely watching it. It's on my radar. So yeah, And you can always come back here, and I'll always give news and a little bit of factoids and things when I can. So yeah. I think this would be a good place to end the video. I really, really, really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys like and subscribe. Always remember to click that little bell icon to get notified when I upload anything. 
So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys like and subscribe and bye-bye.